A lot of people ask us about the concept of full mouth rehabilitations as a prosthodontist or a general dentist after BDS. To answer this question, we have got an eminent personality, Dr. Moez Khakiani, who talks about this full mouth rehabilitations extensively. Dr. Moez Khakiani is an MDS in prosthodontics and oral implantology. He is a professor at Karnavati School of Dentistry, Ahmedabad. Other than that, he is a fellow of TMD, Orofacial Pain and Dental Sleep Medicine from Roseman University, USA. He is also a postgraduate in Aesthetic and Cosmetic Dentistry from the State University of Buffalo, USA. He is also a KOL for various companies like Colgate, 3M, Abbott, IPC and so on. He is also the proprietor for Smile Masters and Jaw Joint Matters Pandra West. He is the course coordinator for MIK Education and the co-founder of MIK Dental. He has authored the books Clinical Fixed Prosthodontics, Starter and Master Volume. I'm Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Hi, sir. Thank you for joining us today. It's amazing to have you as a part of our show. You are one of the initial people who got into prosthodontics when a decade ago, everyone wanted to get into oral surgery or orthodontics. Why did you choose prosthodontics over those called star branches of that time? You went straight for the jugular there. <laughs> uh, firstly, thank you for inviting me. It gives me immense pleasure to be sharing a little bit about my mindset and my thought process uh, with respect to dentistry and, and life in general. So um, I know when you crack the exam, your first thought is I'm going to take ortho, I'm going to take endo, uh, surgery prosto is not something that often features on the top of the list let me tell you prosto was not my first love oh that was orthodontics okay okay and and i'm sure you understand uh so these ke, the teacher has a very important role to play in shaping your mind towards what is going to be your subject of choice for the future Absolutely. So through my five years of bachelor's in D.Y. Patel, I had this one professor uh, from the Department of Orthodontics. He was the head of the department then. Uh, one of those rare double MDSs. He was an MDS in oral surgery and an MDS in ortho. And I was like his pet. All right. Okay. I was this darling, this so-called uh, prodigal son. So... Ortho is always my first love. I wanted to do orthodontics, but life took me on, on a different journey. And I'm hoping to share uh, nuances of what happened that changed my mindset uh, moving forward into this uh, interview. But uh, Prosto is like the one thing that I don't think I can do anything else today. If you take prosthodontics out of me, I am life. So I am completely dependent on who I am as a prosthodontist because it defines who I am as an individual. Uh, second BDS, if you remember, there was uh, DADH. And yes. uh, one of the most loved, hated aspects of that was carving a wax block. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth here. The truth is I was insanely good at it. Whoa. I was one of those who uh, <laughs> people wax block de te te, Please, 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 Mera bhi. So I've always enjoyed uh, aesthetics. I have had this innate understanding of gauging what line angles are, what the shape of a tooth is, that incisal edge embrasures, what defines the youth as against the male and the female and the young and the old and things like that. Uh, I was fascinated by that. So maybe somewhere down the line, because... Prosthetics is a lot to do with aesthetic dentistry as well. So somewhere I was able to join those dots. And uh, here I am as someone who designs smiles. 
understood uh, but sir people in general have this opinion that prosthodontics is about crown and bridges and dentures okay whereas you talk all major topics like smile designing full mouth rehabilitations looking at it so right. what are the various options other than just crown and bridges and dentures a young prosthodontist has in his plate today oh good question okay before you listen to the answer to that question if you're even getting one point out of this video please do not forget to hit the like button below because the guest out here has taken time from his busy schedule to come and join us and if you want to take your career to the next level this is the channel you need to subscribe to um if you remember going through bds again if i tell you perio you can name one book you study that book and you can pass an exam. I tell you conservative, you'll know one book. Dental materials, there'll be one book. Uh, if I tell you oral surgery, there's one book. Ortho, one book. When I ask you prostho, there's no single book because prostho is so goddamn wide a topic. There's so much to do when it comes to prosthetic dentistry. Let me just lay it out to you. Of course, uh, dentures and cast partials are a part of it. Crown and bridge dentistry is a part of it. But the one new thing that has caught uh, the imagination of the world, of course, is implant dentistry. And I and I know there is a lot of debate around implant kiska bachcha hai, right? <laughs> Kaun sa field uska mai baap hai. And, and yet I am someone who very strongly believes that patients don't come for implants. Patients come for the tooth on top of that implant, right? Which means it has to be prosthetically planned which means prosto comes first and prosto comes last. The middle phase could be a surgical component, could be a soft tissue component. Uh, but unless you go in with a prosthetic acumen there, you may not see the wide range of success that implants have to offer, which means you could be any speciality, but you have to have that, have that prosthetic edge to ensure that you achieve long-term success with implants. So I am thinking of implants as this, uh, you know, it's like gardening. It's it's barren and, and you want to see fruits in that area. So the seed that goes in, it's like this magic uh, pill of sorts where you put in an implant into bone and you give someone a third dentition, right? Which is very, very unique because a lot of patients, when they lose their teeth, they gain value for the lost tooth which means when we give them a third dentition, they're going to do everything to preserve the work that has been done in their mouth. So implant dentistry is very, very fascinating. Of course, something that I love to do a lot, which is full mouth reconstruction, where everything's broken, it's mutilated, it's battered. And now the challenge is in, in my hands to reconstruct everything, right? Rebuild. Uh, and I'm thinking of that as an architect in my head. It's like, char diwale hai. Or we have design it hai, sajana hai, savarna hai. So I, I love full mouth reconstructions. Also remember prosthetic dentistry has this domain of the TM joint, right? Which is the highest joint in the human body. And more and more and more, especially post COVID, we've realized that patients are clenching and bruxing excessively. And more and more patients are coming to a dental practice with TM joint disorders. And I don't know of any other branch that can manage TM joint issues using conservative protocols like a prosthodontist can. Last but not the least, you have a cancer survivor. I mean, you're like that ray of hope to them saying they've lost a part of their face and we are here to reconstruct, giving them their own identity by giving them function one more time. So there is so much when it comes to uh, prosthetic dentistry. I believe there are a zillion options out there. And all of this makes prosthetics immensely exciting to me as a dentist. Understood. Uh, but sir, you love FMRs, full mouth rehabs. And you were among right. the initial people to talk about full mouth rehabs when people were doing single tooth dentistry. Okay. But what right. gave you this outlook that 10 years ago, you were thinking that in the future, people will be looking at full mouth rehabs. It was a senior dentist who had seen patients for 20, 30 years who were talking about it. But someone young at that point of time coming out and telling no full mouth rehab is the way to go. How did you get that idea and gauge what the future held? Uh, push me against the wall and that's when I fight back my best. Right. So I'm someone who loves a challenge. 
and when it comes to full mouth reconstruction i i love to take a path that is less traveled in general that's my attitude uh, towards life not go with uh, the herd mentality which means someone had to from the young generation take up uh, that mantle and if someone had to why should it not be me all right so that was my thought process i was always looking for uh, something more to do because completed my bds took a 3 year break before i started mds so that 3 years was exploring time for me saying what is it that i can do in dentistry that is beyond uh, drill fill and kill a tooth i wanted to challenge myself and i wanted to see how is it there that i can improve the lives of patients and other dentists let me give you a quick sneak peek into what my growth years were my mom has been a teacher all her life so teaching is something that was in my blood which means whenever i would read something all right in dentistry or or in life in general when i'm reading something i don't read from a perspective of giving a theory exam i read it from the perspective of giving a viva okay. what this basically means is whenever i'm reading something i am thinking how do i understand this in such a way that i can explain it in a simplified manner and i needed a complex topic which i could break down make easier and tell the world if i can you can too and i'm someone who loves food i'm i'm a big time foodie all right and when you go to a place you have the option of doing either an a la carte meal or you have a buffet an a la carte is is where you say i want this dish you're served that dish buffets i'm not counting what i am eating i'm not counting what i've ordered i have the entire platter with me that's how i like it and that's a full mouth reconstruction i'm not looking at doing crown and bridge dentistry and convincing every patient who comes in acha aapko ye chahiye aapko ye chahiye i'd rather do it once and then enjoy the fruit of the entire buffet understood uh, so but it is a lot of people think it is easy for the star dentists who have star patients to convince patients for full mouth rehabs now if i am someone sitting in a tier 2 city my patients are concerned about cost of one tooth one root canal one rct is it possible for the general dentist sitting in tier 2 cities and not having the high grade patients to convince patients for full mouth rehabs um i think what matters most here uh, is your mindset how confident are you convincing your patient to get the treatment done and to get it done from you because remember any and every city no matter what tier it belongs to there will be people who drive a maruti there will be people who drive the mercedes if you believe that you are in a capacity to provide quality treatment to the elite class sure all you need is one good case a month i once attended a lecture which was titled rich dentist poor dentist and it started saying the rich dentist makes uh just giving you a ballpark figure 5 lakh rupees a month and the poor dentist makes 5 lakh rupees a month so what's the difference between a rich and a poor dentist a rich dentist does lesser number of patients but charges more a poor dentist on the other hand is is breaking his back day in and day out has probably an opening time doesn't have a clinic closing time because clinic shuts when patients are done this is one who's like my my operatory is filled with patients i have four chairs five chairs eight chairs chairs come pad rahi hai mujhe i have so many patients waiting outside i have no time for myself i have no time for my family and things like that i mean uh worst quality of life in all of this uh i think i was fortunate to land up in a city where people are more receptive to taking big budget treatments but i am fairly confident regardless of where you put me i will still be able to convince patients because patient convince is is, is not just uh, about telling them the importance of what you are doing but connecting with them on an emotional front and that's very 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 important and unfortunately that is not a skill that we as dentists are ever taught soft skills that's something that i believe more and more clinicians should invest time and effort into learning because that's where smart work comes in hard work goes down 
So, sir, how do you convince these patients who are concerned about these treatments are expensive? How do you go about creating that connect with them? Okay. Uh, I remember the first time that I purchased my own car. And uh, I was very happy when I when I first purchased. It was, uh, it was a manual stick. And I had learned the first gear, second gear, third gear. And I said, I'm going to go uh, in my own car. It was, I remember... A, a few weeks later, not even uh, months, a few weeks later, which is when for the first time I came to know there's something called an automatic car. And I remember telling myself, Yaar, kitni hai. Gosh, iske mein pata hota, I would have chosen this. A lot of times, patients who walk into our practices don't know the amplitude of problems that they have in their mouth. They often come in saying, Yeh daat mein dard hai, ab ye kar lo. It's like EMI. Chota, chota, chota kaam kar Shai pata hi nahi hai that there is a bigger issue in their mouth. I think it all starts with communicating with them, letting them know that there is a bigger problem. And I often tell my patients that the problem that you have is a disease. Uh, people relate medicine better than dentistry. Disease is something that hits them in their head space saying, oh, bimari hai ye? Yes. If you've lost tooth enamel, which is the hardest structure in the human body, be rest assured, this is not normal. If you are para-functioning, this is centrally mediated. There is probably a bigger issue that's, that's happening. And if you continue that habit, you're going to keep breaking the dentition down more and more and more. So the one thing that I often tell my patients, I, I love to do what, is, what I call Bhavishya Mani. I will show them a picture. business. I will show them this picture saying, if timely treatment is not done, these are the several issues that you can face in the future. My understanding is the job that I have at hand as a dentist, is first educating my patient, helping them make a decision, and then taking them through the journey of that reconstruction, step by step. It is not compulsory that if I tell my patient you need a full mouth, my patient has to get it done then and there. Zaruri nahi hai. Leave the ball in their court. Do your job well. Explain to them the pros and the cons of getting it done vis-a-vis -vis not getting it done. And if you feel that they, they show some sense of uh, comfort saying, okay, I'm going to think about this, then walk the journey with them step by step by step. Help them understand that you are there with them because you probably don't know what that patient is going through on a mental basis, on a, on a physical health basis, on a financial basis. So you can help them make a decision, but you can't force yourself upon them and if they do agree to it uh, just do the best that you can for them because they are now your visiting cards always remember a happy patient speaks to 10 others an unhappy patient will speak to 100 others so you'd rather do less work but quality work and ensure that uh, you go to sleep peacefully knowing you could not have done it any better and then allow your patients to be the perfect testimony for the kind of work that you do. Understood. Uh, small little things. Remember, you make an investment, you don't get returns the same day. It's after years and years that these investments come through. So uh, toil today, do the hard work today, do the diligence today, uh, be empathetic towards your patients today because in the future is when this will all pay off. And then when it pays off, it pays off like this. Initially, it's always a slow growth. But jab tak ye nahi karoge, tab tak aapka rocket launch nahi hoga. Understood. Uh, you were talking about when you bought your first car and everything. Similarly, when patients come to a clinic, okay, uh, the first thing is when we buy a car, we say, kitna deti hai, as in mileage. Similarly, when patients come to your clinic, they're spending a huge sum, okay. Yeah. If they end up asking you, how long does this treatment tend to last? What is your answer to them? Okay. Uh, if they're asking me how long does it last, the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Because it tells me they're at least thinking about it. 
जो बंदा बोलता है ना मैं पूछ के सोच के बताऊंगा आपको दैट पर्सन ने कमिंग बैक इफ समिंग यू हाउ मच टाइम विल इट लास्ट थिंक इन योर हेड स्मॉल टिक saying you've convinced this individual to think a little beyond what you thought ke bhai nahi nahi ye banda shayad karwayega be very happy and this is again where i go to the medical model when i tell them life ka koi bharosa nahi hai all right tell me if you spend 5 lakh rupees getting a bypass surgery done are there guarantees to the fact that you will get off the table and live for 20 years no this is the human body i simply tell them i cannot guarantee how long will this last but what i can guarantee you is i will walk the journey with you i will not leave you oh, oh famous dialogue hai na haath nahi chhodna saath nahi chhodna and that's the kind of trust that i want to instill in my patients i want to let them know that i'm i'm here for them all right and what i what i love to do when my when i plan my full mouth reconstructions is i always work with packages for patients which basically means i tell them this will be the cost of the treatment if you choose this particular prosthetic material let's say pfm the cost will be this much zirconia the cost will be this much emax the cost will be this much i have included the cost of a splint that they have to wear at the end of the treatment i have also included the cost of a follow up with them and i'm telling them here whatever i do to your treatment if i need an extra root canal to be done it's on me a crown lengthening done it's on me an extraction to be done it's on me i'm not going to charge you extra for that you pay only this much i think it's a it's a very fascinating way of getting them to build trust because imagine you tell them x amount and then raste ke beech mein you tell them actually na ek aur procedure karna padega uska 15000 rupaya hoga this patient has lost faith in you this patient says atak gaya main ab mere paas kya option hai uska jo confidence level hai na patient ka wo pura toot jata hai so i love working with packages because i know पेशेंट्स को पता है अब इससे कम नहीं होगा इससे ज्यादा खर्चा नहीं होगा एंड आई ऑलवेज अंडर प्रोमिस एंड ओवर डिलीवर एंड दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफेन इन एन अटेम्प्ट टू कन्विंस अ पेशेंट हम कई बार ओवर प्रोमिस कर जाते हैं उनको उनको बोलते हैं हम आपको 25 साल जवान कर देंगे आप पहले से भी बेहतर खाना खा पाओगे आई मीन यू आर रेजिंग देयर एक्सपेक्टेशंस टू एन अनरियलिस्टिक लेवल सो ऑलवेज अंडर प्लेट and then over achieve and and often when patients come in saying kitna time lagega i i will tell them more than what i anticipate let's say if i believe i'm going to be done with that case in a month i'll tell them 45 days to 2 months and then completed in a month they are very happy because you pre completed the work but if you take even 5 days extra it doesn't leave a good taste in their mouth so small little things uh as i said i don't i don't guarantee everything will survive in your mouth it's a disease right and i can't change that for you but i need your cooperation i tell them it's my work in your mouth you have to take care of this for me because remember if this goes bad there's no coming back you don't want to become a prosthetic cripple right so you try to educate them and bring them on board on your side because treatment doesn't end with just giving them crowns right they have to maintain this and they have to wear a splint or a guard that protects the delicate porcelain for the rest of their lives so this is a discussion i have with them before treatment because whatever you tell patients before treatment is explanation what you tell patients after treatment is an excuse so you tell them that you need to wear a guard to protect the delicate porcelain whenever you sleep for the rest of your life so they immediately ask huh जिंदगी भर पहनना पड़ेगा इट्स लाइक यस अगेन रिलेटेड टू द मेडिकल मॉडल यू टेल देम इफ यू हैव हाइपरटेंशन इफ यू हैव डायबिटीज फॉर हाउ लॉन्ग डू यू टेक मेडिकेशन फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ दिस इज आल्सो अ डिजीज इट्स अ नॉन कम्युनिकेबल डिजीज कमिंग फ्रॉम द ब्रेन क्लेंचिंग ब्रॉक्सिंग इवन इफ आई गिव यू द परफेक्ट बाइट इट डजंट मीन यू आर गोना स्टॉप ब्रॉक्सिंग सो यू हैव टू ब्रिंग देम ऑन बोर्ड एंड एंड लेट देम नो दैट दे आर अ पार्ट ऑफ द एंटायर प्रोसेस because this is a two way street i love to tell them tali do haath se bachti hai understood uh now you have done your masters in prosthodontics so you have learned all this a general dentist if he's thinking of getting into full mouth rehabilitation is it possible is it achievable um sure i mean 
I am not someone who's going to go out there and tell you if you're not a prosthodontist, you can't do a full mouth reconstruction. That's that's absolutely wrong. All right. Uh, let me introduce to you this, this wonderful term, which is called as a prosthodentist. You're not an MDS on paper, but you're an MDS here. If you are, if you have the skill and the acumen to do good quality dentistry, it doesn't mean if you're not a prosthodontist, you cannot do a full mouth. Uh, that's that's a thought that comes to my mind again. Uh, how did you learn driving? Did, uh, you, did you go me. into a car and then just start by yourself? Of course not. Exactly. Driving school, you had someone mentor, right? Someone guide you through the process. All right. So my thought process at all times is gain knowledge, gain education. Find a mentor who can teach you this. Maybe call a prosthodontist to do a case in your clinic and see what is being done. Question the prosthodontist. Later on, take knowledge and attempt to do a full mouth reconstruction under the guidance of a prosthodontist. So remember the first scenario is a prosthodontist doing the case and you're watching. Later on, you could do a case and a prosthodontist is watching. And then once you know how to swim, you know how to swim. It doesn't matter how deep the water is. That's when you go solo then. You know what matters at the end of the day is you deliver quality dentistry, right? It's not about who's doing it. It's not about whether you're an MDS or not an MDS. I think what matters is having the skill, the knowledge and the aptitude, all right? And, and be passionate towards it and, and be compassionate towards your patients. Understood. You should. Now, but you have been training a lot of dentists across India. Now, if I've seen this interview of ours and I want to learn it from you, how do I connect with you and where do I attend one of these courses? Um, so I have tried my best to reach out to any and every dentist who wants to learn from me. And I've done this through three different portals. The first portal is for people who love to read. I have had that proud privilege of authoring two different textbooks, which are currently in the second edition. There's one which is called as the starter volume, which is all about basic procedures, crown and bridge dentistry. And then there's a master volume, which is all about full mouth reconstructions, occlusions, smile design, implants, and things like that. These are available on mikdental.in. So these are books that you can call for and read. And, and the beautiful thing about these books is it's not a theory book that you read to pass an exam. It's a clinical guide. It's an atlas. It's full of pictures. All right. And as you scroll, you see pictures and, and you know what I'm trying to explain. And it's very simple language. You'll actually think I'm talking to you because it's not in scripted English. It's in spoken English. So I've tried to keep it as casual, as friendly as possible, not using fancy terminology so that you can absorb whatever uh, I have tried to share. That's one way. The second is I have a lot of my content recorded and uploaded on mikeducation.com, which means it's all online. You can sit at the comfort of your home and learn everything about full mouth reconstructions from me. You can learn about temporomandibular joint disorders and their management online from me. You can learn about porcelain veneers from me. You can learn about complete dentures from me. And there are so many free videos in there as well. Do go and log in to MIK Education and, and a new avenue and a new portal will open up about prosthetic dentistry. If you are someone who is apprehensive or scared about prostho, this is where the fear goes away. This is where you go back feeling empowered and confident saying, knowledge hai, ab execute karke dekhte hai. And of course, if you want to learn from me in person, uh, often I conduct uh, courses which are typically four day courses where I take you through lectures, patient demonstration and a hands-on on full mouth reconstructions and temporomandibular joint disorders. Again, details for these will be available on mikdental.in. So I have tried my best to put my knowledge and understanding out into the world. And of course, uh, part of YouTube and part of Instagram and Facebook where we all try to share our two cents of how grateful we are that dentistry has put put us up on a pedestal where we can also teach 
Understood. So my next question to you is, you have been an inspiration for a lot of people out there, but there will be some people who you are inspired by. Could you name them? Yeah. The one thing that I've noticed a lot recently amongst young graduates is uh, there's a lot of despondency in there. I'm not sure if I've made the right decision in life. Uh, dentistry is not that fulfilling. Dentistry is not that rewarding. And, and I'll tell you what, somewhere down the line, I had a similar thought in my head, all right? But this is where you learn from stalwarts out there. This is where you take uh, example from people who've made it in life, all right? And there are a few people who are, who are renowned. And, and there's always something that these people have to add, which cumulatively then becomes your identity, all right? These are small recipes for success. So let me share with you a few people that I have looked up to. Uh, who have helped uh, shape my mindset. And, and uh, a few of these, of course, starting with uh, the old but eternally young man, that's uh, Mr. Ratan Tata himself. Uh, he's a visionary, right, behind the Tata group. And, and what is he known for? He's known for his pursuit for excellence. He doesn't like to settle for anything that's mediocre. And, and being a Capricornian, that's something that's uh, that's a spark in me as well. I'm that go-getter. I'm that uh, perfectionist for whom the smallest of detail really matters. And, and that's what really helps me in my full mouth reconstructions and my TMDs as well, because the game is all about microns when it comes to prosthetic dentistry. All right. So uh, this is where reading and knowing more about Ratan Tata really, really helped. Also, uh, another very famous man is the chairman of uh, Reliance Industries. Uh, you have Mr. Mukesh Ambani. And he is known for um, his innovation and his ability to adapt, right? So it's important that in dentistry, we always realize that we have to keep adapting to the changing times. There was a time when everything was about removable prosthesis because everything was about extractions. And then came a phase where everything was about saving teeth and doing root canals and then crowns. Today, I talk about partial bonded restorations because I don't like the concept of a full coverage crown. So it's important that we keep changing ourselves with time. We keep uh, innovating uh, and adapting to the changing times. Don't get lost. My dad used to always tell me, never be the first to start something Never be the last to give up on something. And if you're somewhere in that middle phase where you're open to change, I think it, it has a has a major impact, especially if you're if you're a youngster, because uh you're in that moldable phase, right? And and that's where if you learn to do quality work at an early age, uh, you will realize that as time goes by, dentistry can be extremely fulfilling in, in every sense uh of uh, the world. I also love the fact that, uh, let's say, an Anand Mahindra, uh, who loves to build relations. So for me, it really matters that my patients absolutely love me. I am here to bring smiles into their lives. I, I believe that's like my, my vision and my mission on earth. So I want to build relations where I stay connected with them even after the treatment. Small things where you hear them. Because a lot of these people who are geriatrics, for them, uh, there's no one out there who's willing to understand what they're going through. And it's okay if your consultation's not 10 minutes, but instead runs into an hour. So what? You may have just sparked uh, a new relationship uh, with someone and, and you never know how this comes back to you. Not just in this world, but the world after. Because uh, remember, there's something called karma. right? What you give eventually does come around and not not always is this in measurable or, or tangible matters. So like Anand Mahindra, I love to build uh, strong relationships. And that's something that I would want more and more dentists to work on. Uh, invest in continuous learning is another thing that I've learned from uh, Azim Premji because he insists on lifelong learning, continuing education, right? Because as I said, times are changing. And, and you don't want to become obsolete in all of this because in the world of composites, there's not a lot of room for amalgam anymore. So learn, all right? If you want to be that uh, dentist who 
also wants to be known as are yaar mujhe unke jaisa banna hai if you want to lead by example you need to put in the man hours into continuing education another man which is narayan murthy uh, he is known for his ethics right he's his hardcore love for values and uh, me coming from a family who did not have a lot of means my my education uh, was not the funding for my education was very very tough for my family they had to cut a lot of basic needs pay, to get me educated and today life has changed because education uh, with proper ethics and and not cheating anyone remember it's not just about financial gain because uh, if if you or your parents are a patient you expect the doctor to do nothing but the best and if you expect the best you should also do the best for any and every patient uh, who walks into your practice so another person who really inspires me uh, from biocon is uh, piran Mar Ma mazumdar shaw because uh, it's about uh, entrepreneurship and i have had that privilege in life uh, of designing products under mik dental banner i have seven design patents so i, I have a site Today. which says uh, attempt to do everything that can make dentistry easier for others uh, and last but not the least uh, shiv nadar because it's all about philanthropy it's about giving back to uh, society um, i think do these outreach programs help the underprivileged and and things like that but uh, all in all remember uh, like in life like in dentistry everything comes down to commitment it comes comes down to doing uh, dedicated hard work uh staying patient staying committed on on this uh lifelong journey and and i am someone who wants to see you succeed all right and if you are watching this episode right now be rest assured that i'm rooting for you okay uh because remember discipline is what leads to habits habits lead to consistency and consistency leads to growth and and it's not about uh age it's about energy if you think you're too young to make a difference think again if you think you're too old to make a difference think again i wish you the absolute very best in your personal and your professional lives thank you so much sir it's amazing to listen to you all your lectures all your speeches motivate people out there and have made a lot of dentists decide to take that leap for growing themselves and growing their practice as well thank you for being a part of us thank you thank you i feel privileged if you like this video do not forget to check out our other two videos here which will take your career to the next level